Well, hello, I'm Doc Martin, the lone journalist for KRAZ TV. Arachnids. That's right. Spiders of the world. A natural history edited by Norman I. Plantnik. Plantnik. King, here's a good way to remember how it goes. It's King Philip came over for good stuff. So it's kingdom, phylum, order, class, uh, phylum, genus, species. <laughs> that helps, I guess. Anyway, I could not put this book down. When I first started looking at them, I, they're not ugly. They're just different, and they're very strange. And even in amongst themselves, they're, <laughs> they're very strange. But they're fascinating creatures. I, I could not believe that a lot of people keep these uh, larger ones for uh, pets. And what's surprising is, is they last many years. Some of the spiders have lifespan 4, 12, and uh, a woman named Barbara Maiden in, uh, in Australia in the 1940s found a spider. She kept watching it and hold yourself 40 years. She was done in, at 40 years or whatever. And they think the spider lived three more years. Now in generations, if there's six of that, so there's 240 times how old we are. So I guess, and the way they live, it would be almost like 2,000 year old human <laughs> compared, you know, for their size and, and lifestyle and all that. So it's an amazing, amazing book. It has several contributors. It's, it comes from the Princeton University Press, Princeford and Oxford. The contributors are Gustavo Hormiga, Peter Yeager, Rudy Jacques, 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 Norman I. Plantnik, Martin J. Ramirez, Robin J. Raven. Oh. Well, here's a little uh, bio on uh, Norman I. Platnick. Is Peter J. Solomon family curator, emeritus of spiders of, at the American Museum of Natural History, where he curated the world's largest collection of spiders. A Ph.D. recipient from Harvard University, Platnick has described more than 1,800 species of spiders, making him the second most prolific arachnologist uh, in history. He created the World Spider Catalog, online a, an online database that provides people around the globe with ready access to all the taxonomic, taxonomic literature on more than 48,000 species, a resource that is untouched, unmatched for any other group of organisms. What a fantastic body of work. Oh, a stunning illustrated natural history of spiders. Spiders are among the most versatile creatures on the planet, inhabiting six of the seven continents and thriving in environments ranging from deserts and rainforest to arctic tundra and cities. Spiders of the World is a captivating look at these wondrously adaptive and endlessly intriguing arachnids. Written by six of the world's leading experts on spiders. This uh, stunningly uh, illustrated natural history features a wealth of spectacular color photos and covers a, a breathtaking array of spider species from around the globe, uh, uh, describing their behaviors, characteristics, and more remarkable evolutionary adaptations. An incisive and engaging uh, 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 an introduction provides an invaluable overview of the world spider and is followed by in-depth profiles spanning more than 100 spider families and presented, taxon and presented taxonomically. Each profile is organized phylogenically and includes beautiful photography to illustrate various species within the family. There is also distribution maps, tables of essential facts, and commentaries highlighting diverse aspects of spider biology, making spiders of the world on an indispensable volume 
for anyone who wants to learn more about these marvelous creatures. Well, that sure is. Wow. So it educates and engages readers about the unique natural history. Spy, uh, co editor uh, P.E. Cushing, Spiders of North American Identification Manual, says Engaging, Platnik's concise and entertaining book will make a, a popular addition to the libraries of uh, arachnologists as well as naturalists who are interested in the world of creepy crawlies. <laughs> oh, what a fascinating, fascinating. And in the looks, there's one that people keep. Kind of the tarantula stuff. Uh, they have eyes. They have multiple eyes. They have anywhere from two to eight eyes. They have large eyes. They're set differently. Front, right, left. They can see behind themselves. <laughs> they see to the side. The little places in the back of them is called a spinneret. And that's where the, the uh, well, there's a spigot that puts out the, the, the silk. There's different kinds of silk. And then the back legs or the spinnerets distribute it and put it into the certain type of form that it needs. So they make flat sheets. They make round. Well, not all spiders don't make all the different. One spider doesn't make all of them. They're characteristically of a flat sheet. Uh, some of them are funnel sp uh, spiders. You've heard about those. And there's uh, orb webs. There's horizontal there's uh, vertical uh, orbs, and then there's uh, bi-dimensional, so there's one one way and one way, and there's trans-dimensional, where they're just all over the place. Some of them uh, do hodgepodge, some of them make nets, some of them look like chicken wire. In fact, there's, there's a chicken wire uh, spider in here. <coughs> so they belong to the arthropods, which are part of scorpions and all, and that too, So, but they're a different class. So the, this is called a Kelicera, kel, this part here, and then the fangs are down here, the little uh, pokers. The eyes and the, and I think it's uh, carapace. Yeah, carapace is the head. There's the abdomen. There's legs. They, on the right-hand side, the very first forward is leg one. They have eight legs. That's what makes them distinct. They have little names of their on the legs of a patella, which is in your knee, your tibia, your metatarsal, your tarsals, and the femur. Just like in a human leg, it's it's just divided and it has the joints there. Now some of these le legs of the spider can stay like this, or they can flatten out and so that's called lateral uh, lateral grade it means they take and turn their legs so that they can uh, lay flat to the ground and they can pull them back and forwards and they can uh, uh, crawl into tiny holes and, and crevices some of these pictures they have uh, you think they're a large spider but they're like 0 0.02 millimeters uh, some of them are just 0 0.015 smaller than the I said a period on the end of a sentence, so I was enthralled. But what really got me, now there's so many different colors too, and some of the ones that look blue and all, the, the hairs on them structure and hold the light so it diffracts the light. And so you see blue legs and, and purple abdomens and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's really a proteins that, uh, like in... Um, of, of butterflies, those gorgeous colors are, are from proteins that go diffract the light. Uh, their sex habits are, are are pretty wild. The, the female holds the sperm from the males and receptors called, oh gosh, I knew there was a term. Oh. Well, anyway, it's the, well, they have opening of the trachea. So the trachea, they breathe from the back of their body, I guess. And there's a thing called body lungs, but some of them don't have body lungs. They have trachea. But there are receptors that the female will hold uh, the sperm until she's ready to lay or whatever. 
Now some of their habits are that uh, the male will figure out how to uh, uh, fertilize the female without getting eaten. Some of them get eat. Some of them are killed while they're fertilize, uh, uh, mating and other times they uh, go ahead and allow themselves to be killed to feed the babies of the spiders. There are other ones called matrophages where the mother, after she's laid her eggs and made sure that the children are, are growing, allows them to eat her. <laughs> uh, spiders that eat other spiders, arachnophages, are spiders that mostly and dine on other ones. But some of these spiders will also, uh, well, in Australia, they have cane toads. I gotta go on now. I'll be right back. Well, you won't believe that phone call was somebody calling me about a spider in their garage. And you know what I told them? Leave it alone. They won't hurt you. I have a, a, a black widow out here in the garage. I leave it alone. It stays up underneath there. They don't, they don't hurt you. They won't bother you. Around the edges of my house here, inside, I just leave them alone. They catch up a lot of... Uh, of flies and, and insects and you know in some places in Madagascar and stuff they bring special spiders in the house just to get the darn flies and stuff because they are more prevalent in uh, tropic and places like that where they have a lot of insects so they need and want the spiders <laughs> so anyways there are a couple of spiders and uh, funnel webs and all that there's only one spider that is very deadly and it, it has not, in this book, it's said to have been known to kill somebody in 15 minutes. But there is usually anti-venom for almost all the poisonous spiders, so uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. And the, a lot of the spiders, even though their venom is, is uh, powerful on other insects and stuff, their teeth or fangs are so tiny they cannot even get into or bite the skin or anything. Now, some of them have fangs that can puncture and, and all that. And yet, look, people keep the pets these monstrous <laughs> tarantulas you know they could hook and hang their uh, fangs are so long so it's just all over the map but i'll tell you that we would not be where we're at without spiders but it is so amazing there's jumping spiders i mean I'm, i know i'm going on with this but i was fascinating there's a thing called ballooning where they spin it out the, the fiber into the wind and as it gets big enough it picks them up off the ground and they fly and are floating through the air with with spiders there are other spiders that shoot out their web and they uh float it across into a, a, cha a chasm or a, a, a open space like in the floor of a of a forest where they don't want to get down in there with the ants and stuff and then they go across the zip line to, uh, because they can put a spinner wrap behind them and then they uh, go on the thread. The, the, the silk is different kinds. There's chunky steins that are cribolate and ecribolate. And uh, the, the sum of the silk is uh, will stretch 15 times. And one of them stretches 25 times its original length. So it really gives well. And they're actually doing experiments uh, with silk that and some of them do there are people that gather silk and there was you know, I think in Thailand they have a textile that's in a museum that was woven from spider silk it took years and years just to gather the millions of webs and all but it is a really gorgeous thing I saw it one time but they do mention it in this book so you have to get the book at your library there's uh, spiders that live under the water. There's spiders that live near the water. There's spiders that live in the sand. And they're all camouflaged. The ones that live in white sand are white. <laughs> there are wolf spiders. Oh, the, there's some that grab things. There's, there's one spider that it does have, doesn't have any teeth or doesn't uh, kill with uh, fangs or anything. So it hurries up and and runs around the, the, the prey and will use a hundred yards of, uh, of silk to encircle the, the prey. And while it's doing it, it's coating it with enzymes from its midgut. And then uh, it goes in and eats and liquefies the prey. And it also even liquefies some of the silk. So they go back in through up in there and, and eat, it, eat the uh, hemolymph. 
That's the gushy stuff we call like blood, but it's hemolymph. What an amazing, amazing. I just, uh, there are so many characteristics. There's a peacock uh, in Australia, huge like a, uh, a tarantula, a big hairy thing, but he's got orange and red and, and uh, blue stripes. And they, uh, like a bowery bird, they puff out and, and uh, try to impress females and stuff. Uh, a lot of things, there was a thing called Guanduana land, which was long before. And some of these spiders were all related and were on these solid mass before it separated. And they moved to, went to Australia and some of the islands and stuff. Some of these uh, spiders migrated on, on, uh, on floating things. Now they're, they've uh, gone into cargo and come in ships and bananas and stuff like that. So... The range has really moved out, but a lot of them have specialized environments. They only live in the dark. Some live under leaf. Uh, some only hunt at night. Some hunt in the daytime. Some, the ant spiders, they, they mimic and look like ants. Their bodies are segmented kind of more like an ant. They raise their feelers up so they look like antenna. Uh, uh, oh, God. I, I could go on and on I because almost every genera... Uh, that they mention in here had some other unique features, you know, where they pull a bubble of air down to them, and then they build diving bells that actually, now you won't believe this, pull the dissolved oxygen out of the water into that bubble, into the air. And then somehow the CO2 goes out, they said, when the, the, in the respiration of the spider. What a fantastic. They have got it figured out. And, uh, once I got a look at them, they're so cute, some of them, and, and some of them are just, they're antics. There's, you know, they act like little clowns sometimes, but it's serious business for them and their evolution and, and their offspring. And uh, they're fascinating just like bees are. I don't know, I think, I don't know how many species there were, they said. Oh, God. It was, I don't know. They said they haven't found... Uh, so many. It says, spider is among the uh, dominant predators in almost all systems. They have been known to consume 400 to 800 million tons of prey. Well, we got to have them. They live in diverse altitudes, caves to an altitude of 22,000 feet on Mount Everest. They live in uh, Death Valley to the Tundra Colas Park. And they have been found floating 16,000 feet up in the air. They're arthropods. I don't know. There's, there's, well, like you said, this uh, catalog included 48,000, 48, and I'm sure there's, you know, it says, whereas all other known extant spiders, more than 48,000 current valid species. So some of these are the old segmented doorway spiders, uh, true spiders. Look at that. The blue bottle green, or the green bottle blue tarantula. They're gorgeous. I wouldn't, I mean, 40 years. Can you imagine keeping a pet that long? In a, but they need to be fed, and so I would just leave them alone. And But people do admire them, and they do need studying, and they have meant a lot of value to mankind whether we want to explore it or not. So I know I've been on this book review a long time, but this is one of the few books. Well, I would get this and keep it. It's $30 and worth every penny. Thanks for watching, and thanks for uh, watching The Spiders of the World, A Natural History, edited by Norman I. Platnick. Thank you, and watch all of our shows at krztv.com.